Hello everybody, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we are looking at a book on this channel. Actually, I think this is the second time I've covered a book, and it's not often something I really get into because of a couple of reasons. First off, I don't read books that often anymore, and second, as I don't find them that applicable to you guys all that often. But today is definitely an exception. It is a great technical book of interest to two different camps. There's first off, there's the old farts like myself, and this is an awesome little nostalgia trip. And the second is for people that are perhaps a little bit younger who want to have a look back at their way things were done. And that's exactly what we're looking at today. We're looking at a book called Game Engine Black Book Doom by Fabian Sanglard. If I mangled your name there, I apologize. Uh, this is the first edition of the book. He previously did a copy of a book like this for the Wolfenstein Game Engine. And what it is, is basically a technical guide to how the Doom Game Engine was created. And we're talking very low level nitty gritty stuff here. There's a bit of a a look at the hardware of the day, how things were programmed back then, and then we actually jump into Doom source code. So this is very much a book for programmers. Uh, it's available at his website. I will link that down below as I always do. He's linked it off of Amazon in print form and Google Books. Now, one of the very cool things about this author is he's being very transparent and upright with the cost of this book. He's also really illustrating how screwed up the print world is because uh, as you can see, some of the pricing details going on here. So basically what you're seeing for about the book itself, well, the cool thing is today is the parent 25th anniversary of when Doom.zip was first uploaded for mass consumption. So Doom is basically 25 years old today. Happy birthday, Doom. Thank you for making me feel so old. Um, the book itself is available on Amazon in various different uh, countries, as well as Google Books. That's where I picked it up. The Google Books version has no uh, DRM. You can download it as a PDF file. Uh, it was 10 bucks for me in my own currency, which is Canadian dollars. So I don't know what that will be for everybody else, uh, but probably about eight to 12 bucks, depending on your country of choice. Uh, from November 2017 to November 2018, it took one year to complete both John Carmack and Dave Taylor. If you do not know those names, they were very integral to the development of Doom, especially John Carmack. If you don't know the name John Carmack, you should do a little research. Is one of those kind of super important to the history of uh, game development in general kind of guys. Specifically, he's the guy that created id Tech, and he was the tech genius behind id Software. So games such as Commander Keen, Wolfenstein, and Doom were all kind of his babies. Uh, now he works at Oculus, by the way, but um, he was he did contribute to this and wrote the forewords. Uh, the results of this is a 427 page book, full color, to describe in great detail the PCs of the era. The next hardware, next by the way, was the operating system used to develop the tools that created Doom. Uh, that ultimately was bought by Apple computers and became the core of OS X. Uh, so that is next hardware. Um, the engine and then some technical details on porting it to the various different platforms. Uh, you can see here the book itself is priced at, if you go over to Amazon, I'll show you the US pricing. Uh, we're sitting at a $54 print book. So that $10 digital buy is very, very easy to choose. Now, what I found a little interesting is there was, uh, fine, uh, there was no detail here about digital books. I can only buy it digitally on um, Google Books. So I, I don't know what's up there, but on the topic of buying it, I did buy it. Now, I'm not gonna give you a review here. This came out today and I don't read that fast, but I thought I could at least give you a quick look, flip through of the book so you could have an idea if this is what you're all about or interested in. Now, I grew up in this era. I grew up in the age before um, well, just about everything really, before Direct 3D, before game engines and all that. And it used to start with when we built a game, we first built a game engine. In order to build a game engine, you first built everything. So you used to build something called a scanline renderer. And it normally started with one of the very first things you would do is create a pixel drawing thing, a line renderer, then a 3D to 2D rasterizer. So you used to have to do everything by scratch. And Doom was no exception. That's about the, the end of the pure software generation and where we started to move into 3D hardware and a bit towards the modern age. So back in this day, the way things were done were pretty insane. And this kind of does show you how those things worked. So you got got, again, the forwards from uh, John Carmack and Dave Taylor. Uh, but here we get to the contest. And this, I think, is the area where people are probably the most interested. This is obviously what the book is made up of. So first off, we start off a bit about what the PC was like back in those days and how you actually programmed it. And it was actually a kind of a nobler day in a way. You had access to the hardware. So if you wanted something, you literally stuck this byte into that port and boom, you got back uh, a result. It was a very um, more 
pure era of programming. Now you did everything by yourself, but you had a whole lot of stuff that you had direct access to the hardware, right down to like interrupts on the hard drive controller. It was a pretty insane time. But at the same time, uh, did not mean to do that twice. Um, you also had the end where we're kind of getting to the, the end of what this the 16-bit computer generation was capable of. So we had more and more uh, memory in our computers up to, you know, four megs, eight megs. It was amazing. Uh, we had... Um, 640k hard limit. So we started also getting into DOS extenders, as you can see, they're covered right here as well. Now, um, DOS 4GW was one such DOS extender. This kind of gets into how additional memory was accessed back then. And 100%, the compiler of the day that everybody used was Watcom. Watcom was the compiler for doing 32-bit DOS development, period. And you can actually think of 32-bit DOS extension as basically kind of like a version of 16-bit DOS that then booted itself into 32-bit. It was essentially its own operating system, but it started life as a memory management system. So uh, beyond that, then we get into the next computer. Uh, again, as I mentioned earlier on, Next ultimately became uh, OS X through acquisition. Um, but that was the hardware that Jared Carmack wrote the original level editing tools and uh, actually cross compiled the whole thing over to other machines. And then get into the teams and tools that they used, uh, the various different pieces behind it, a little bit about WAD files. If you've done any Doom modding at all, WAD files are probably burned into your memory. Then we get into the actual code of id tech one. Id tech is the name of the internal ID game engine. So you had id tech one through five, I think, that were actually released in open source to the public. Uh, ITech 5, I believe, uh, ultimately powered Doom 3 generation of games. Uh, so you've got Doom 1 was ITech 1, and then in between we had 2, 3, 4, and then ultimately 5. And now I believe uh, Bethesda, who are now the proud owners of Doom, or Bethesda's parent company, um, Oh, I don't remember the name. It's Zen ZeniMax. Uh, they own Doom now, and they're still continuing to call uh, their in-house technology id tech. Uh, so the newest reboot of Doom runs on id tech 6 or 7, and so on and so forth. So they still have their own in-house game engine called id tech. Uh, but they do jump into the source code here. You can see a bit about like the architecture, um, how different things work, the game loop, fixed time stepping, get into the 2D renderer, then the 3D renderer. Now, as I mentioned earlier, that's how things used to be done. We used to have to create our own 2D renderer and rasterizer, and then you created all of your 3D functionality on top of that. And then we get into the nitty gritty details, palette effects, audio systems, input, artificial intelligence, game tick architecture, networking, performance, Ah, we keep going. And then, so that's kind of a, a that's probably the, the guts of the book right there. The exploration of id tech itself goes from page 147 up through uh, 279. So, oh, wait, nope, 286. So you've got almost 200 pages dedicated to learning uh, the actual game engine itself. And again, that does get into the source code. And then here's the part that gets really interesting for me. They actually jump into the technical details of the various consoles that um, Doom was actually ported to and the programming and the architecture behind it. So if you're interested in how Jaguar was programmed, there is a chapter on that. Sega 32, Super Nintendo, PlayStation 1, 3DO, and the Saturn. And then we get into the appendices uh, where we've got bugs. Uh, so you've got some of the bugs that actually occurred in, and it's always fun reading about bugs in major games that you've seen out there. Um, Next Station Turbo Color, blah, 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 blah. Press release, source code release notes, uh, nothing too, too fun. And then some guides and, yeah, some legacy stuff. So the independent stuff isn't really earth shattering. Now, in terms of what you're getting in here, there's actually quite a bit of illustration um, and depth and detail of how the process works. A lot of full color pictures, as you can see here. And then we do actually get into, so let me just pan down a bit to where we get to the whole, there you go. So you're seeing actual technical details of how process flow actually worked in this guy, how things went together. And then when we get down into id tech one details where it's actually going through the, the this explicits of how the engine was put together, we get in and look at actual code that was used. So this is not just a high level, hey, this is what happened. This is very much a book written uh, to speak to programmers. So it, if you want to understand how the game engine was put together, uh, this is a very technical 
technical guide that shows you a lot of what happened behind the scenes, how main was structured, how the code works, how the setup was done. Uh, and then you kind of get into some of like how the algorithms worked, how input was pulled, uh, you name it. So it's a very interesting book. Uh, again, I haven't read it in absolute detail, so I can't tell you, uh, you know, a whole lot more going on. Now, the cool thing here, and again, the part that I am finding more interesting, especially because I lived this side, as you can tell from a bit of my explanation, I know how the world worked back there, but I don't know how the porting works. So example, if you want to know how the 3DO port was and what the 3DO hardware was like, here is the section on the 3DO. You can actually get some details, see what the board was all about. And you can get into, again, some of the details of what programming was like and what it was like adapting Doom to actually work on that hardware. Uh, so this is the part that I personally am finding perhaps the most interesting. You get kind of that glimpse of how it was involved porting 3DO, sort of the 3DO version of Doom in here and the technical details involved. And again, this is covered for uh, in multiple different platforms. So I think that is definitely a very cool aspect of this book. All right. So that is it. That is the um, Game Engine Black Book for Doom. Now, if you do find this one really, really interesting, the same guy has already done one for Wolfenstein. I find the Wolfenstein technology, even though it was a bit of a probably bigger trendsetter on the whole, the technology itself was a lot less interesting on the whole ray casting and uh, 2D grid based levels. It was a much simpler game based than what Doom was. Doom was an absolute revolution, whereas Wolfenstein gets a lot, mm, probably more credit than it deserves deserves in some ways technologically. Now in terms of game and what it did, no, it's huge, but it was not the first game to do what it did. I would say probably the first grid-based raycast game was Alternate Reality the City going back to like 1983-ish. Now it ran the size of a postage stamp, but it did technically everything that Wolfenstein did. So there was not a whole lot of advancement in technology there, but Doom was a giant leap forward from a technical perspective. So of the two topics, I would definitely be more interested than Doom, than Wolfenstein personally, but uh, you know, to each their own. Now, again, this book if you're a programmer today and you're looking for techniques for making your game today, this probably isn't the book for you. The way that we do things has changed so much that a lot of what you will see here just isn't that relevant. But for a history lesson and a behind the scenes look at the way things used to be and some of the trials and tribulations, it's it's definitely worth reading. And just from a here's how things worked um, kind of perspective or here's how things were ultimately developed, it is a fun read from what I have read so far. Now, I still have to give it some more time. But for me, in my humble opinion, it was well worth my 10 bucks for the PDF version. Okay, so that is the Game Engine Black Book Doom by Fabian Sanglard, I think. Uh, let me know what you think. Any interest in this kind of technology? Any, any interest in books in general on this channel? Let me know all of that stuff in the comments down below. Are you intending to pick this guy up? If so, let me know what you think of it once you've read it. All right, talk to you all later. Goodbye for now.